We're going to have a look at how to use the multilingual delimited text filter to translate Excel files where the source text is in one column, here for example in column A, and you would like to write the translation in the target language in another column, for example column B. The example I've prepared shows different ways that text like this might possibly be arranged. A simple scenario is here on this sheet titled Words. On the sheet called Categories, you've got the source text, which in this case is English, in column B. And you've got several different target languages, which are designated in column C, with the translation to be written into column D. Now, on this particular sheet, all of the text in B for all three target languages is going to be imported unless we apply the filter that has been set up in that column. And so what we'll do is select only the desired target language and allow the text to be sorted that way. On the sheet titled Texts, the source text is once again in column A, and columns B, C, and D have the respective target languages which the client would like to collect. In this particular case, I'm only going to be looking at uh, writing the text into column B for German. And on another sheet entitled More Texts, once again, we have source text in column A, and I would like to write the translation into column B. This is the same structure that we saw in the sheet entitled Words, as you see. So to import this into MemoQ, we go to the Documents ribbon in the project and choose Import with Options. Select the file. Ah, we have a problem here. The Excel file is still open and can't be imported until we close it. So we go back over to Excel, close the file, and the import then proceeds. Now, by default, Excel files will use the filter for Microsoft Excel. But what we want to do is select a different filter. So we're going to select the multilingual delimited text filter. Very easy. However, what you're seeing here is using MemoQ version 8.7. In version 9 of MemoQ, this interface changed. So I'm going to go back now and redo all of this in MemoQ 9 so you'll see some of the differences. Because after we've selected the filter that we want to use, we need to change the filter configuration, which I would do in the older versions of MemoQ by clicking on Change Filter and Configuration down at the bottom of the Import dialog. But it's a little bit different in MemoQ 9. So let's go there and have a look. Here we are in MemoQ 9, and now I'm going to go once again to the Documents ribbon, select Import with Options, and once again, select the file that I want to translate. Okay, and as you can see, once again, the default filter chosen is the Microsoft Excel filter. So we're going to want to go and select the filter that we're actually going to use for this import. The regular Microsoft Excel filter will import all of the content on the sheet. That's not what we want. So we scroll down until we find the multilingual filter. Ah, here we go. 
the multilingual delimited text filter. Now in memo Q9, the filter menus have been reorganized so that the filter type is now displayed in bold and any particular configurations that you may have saved for that filter are then listed underneath. There's the default filter configuration, which ships with memo Q, and I've created and saved one particular custom filter and named it uh, David Multiling XL. I was doing that for a friend named David. Uh, here I'm simply going to select the default filter, and I want to make some changes to that filter. But notice that the command for changing the filter and configuration down at the bottom of the dialog is grayed out. In memo Q9, you have to mark the checkbox in order to have access to this change filter and configuration function. So we'll click that. And here, once again, you can select the filter that you want. In fact, this is the old filter list. So if you don't like the new filter list with the bold text and the individual filter configurations underneath, you can simply check mark the particular line items of interest and then choose the change command. But uh, we're going to go ahead and leave it with the multilingual delimited text filter. And to configure the import, we're going to go over to the Columns tab. We set the source language. In this case, it is English, so we can leave it that way. And there's an option here for first row contains column names. Now, in the example I've prepared, we've got four different sheets. Let's have a look at them once again. On the word sheet, the first row contains text to translate. On the category sheet, it does in fact contain labels. On the text sheet, the same thing, the first row contains labels. And on the fourth sheet, there are no labels, just text to translate. So what are we going to do about that? Now for the first sheet, the first row does not contain any column names or labels. So we can leave that checkbox up here unmarked. And we'll select column A. And indicate that it contains the source text. And then we'll select column B and mark that as being the column for the translation. The translation will be in German and the translation will be for column A. So far, so good. Now let's go ahead and have a look at sheet number two. Once again, the source language will be English. And here the first row contains column names. And on sheet number two, the source text is in column B. And the translation will be written into column D. So we'll mark column D for the translation. It is once again in German. And that will be the translation for column B. Now let's go back and have a look at the configuration for sheet one again. Notice that now the first row contains column names option is marked. Unfortunately, in the current version of this filter, this particular setting is not sheet specific. And because we have a mixture of sheets where the first row contains column names or labels and other sheets where that's not the case, 
I'm going to leave this unmarked. And for those column names, when they occur in the text that we're supposed to translate, we can simply lock those cells after copying the source to the target so that they will remain unchanged. It's a compromise that we have to do given the current features of this particular filter. So let's go back and look at sheet number two. Okay, we've got English, we've got German selected there. Okay, very good. Now we're gonna go on to sheet number three. Now in sheet number three, which is the sheet called texts, we've got the source text in column A. We're going to write the German translation in column B. So let's configure the dialog that way. Column A contains the source text. Column B contains the translation in German for column A. Very good. Now we go on to sheet number four. Now, in this particular case, the formatting is the same as it is in sheet number one. So the source text will be in column A, and we want to write the translation in column B. So we'll tell it to copy the column definitions from sheet number one. If we were to do that from a different sheet, we'd simply use this selector to choose the appropriate sheet. We'll click OK and then watch how it changes the configurations of the columns set for sheet four. Okay, as you can see, it's adopted the configurations that we had set for sheet number one. All right, that's all we need to do. So we'll click OK. Now it's got that particular custom configuration. And we'll check the other options here. They're all OK. We'll click OK and start the import. Oh, it says that there's a warning. Let's go have a look at the little lightning bolt icon and see what the warning is. Ah. It's telling us that we are not using the default filter for an Excel workbook. Well, that's okay. That's on purpose. That's what we need to do for this type of a translation involving an Excel file. So we're going to ignore that warning and click OK to start the import. And here we have the imported file. Okay, up here we see the first five rows contain the text from sheet one. And here in row six, we see some text that uh, we don't want to translate. So we should lock this particular row. I can lock this row by double clicking on the little red X that's a shortcut for what I would otherwise do by going to the preparation ribbon and choosing lock or unlock segments and then the appropriate setting here. So let's scroll down a little further and see what other rows we may want to lock. Okay, I'll lock that one as well. Okay, just those two. And as you can see over on the source text side, there is all of the translatable text imported from the four sheets of interest. Okay, so now the translation is completed. Let's go ahead and export it and see what we've got. So we'll select document, export, And here we see on the first sheet, the German is written in column B as we want it. Here on the second sheet, it's written in column D where it belongs. Let's go ahead and show the other languages. Okay, those have not been written. That's good. 
And on the third sheet, once again, the German is written in the correct column. And on the fourth sheet as well. So, four different sheets with three different formats, all configured in one go with the filter. That's all there is to it.